And also, uh, Andrea said that uh, Alessia is one of the greatest authorities on all of these things. And uh, again, my opinion is not one of them. The, she is the. No. <laughs> Period. No, no, I'm not saying that for any reason other than the fact that that's my truth. That, you know, you know. And um, so, so here we are, and uh, it was a perfect intro because uh, I mirror what uh, Andrea said, uh, you know, about this this status of Rome Italia, and and so importantly, uh, this photo book. I'm going to stop talking very soon. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they know me. They don't care. They want to see the photo book. But um, so this photo book. Okay. Uh, I, this, this is the brainchild. Your brainchild, right? Yeah. Photo book. Yeah. So this is a global forum for the individual to present one picture, many pictures, and have the viewers, a very small team, right? It's just you three and Chiara and, and Francesca. So. And that's it, right. So it's three people. So you send your, your photo to Vogue Italia, photo book, and one of these three brilliant people see your picture and you said they like it or they don't like it and they put it online if they like it. And the amazing thing is here, it's this gives the opportunity because in the transition from print to now, how do you maintain Vogitalia online? And this is a big change in publishing in general and especially fashion and all these things, huge change. And they need to know how to do this. How do you keep Vogitalia, Vogitalia in this modern world? And so now they have access to everyone. So all of the things that people around the world are trying to achieve, equality of diversity, femininity, the female voice, the female vision, ethnicity, regions where that were underrepresented, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, all over the world, they're finding people every day, all day, hundreds of thousands now, right? It's uh, 160,000 photographers from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it's big numbers. Yeah. So they're seeing everything. And all you have to do is be superlative. You make a good picture, they yeah. might like it. That's it. And then we do exhibitions, we do a lot of things with people from Photo Vogue. I mean, there's people that I mentored and I met them through Photo Vogue and they ended up shooting for uh, the print. So for Italian, so I mean it's. Uh, yeah, it's crazy opportunity. So it's not just fashion. There. No, no, no. Because what we thought, what I thought when when I wanted to open Photo Vogue was that, uh, you know, in in the print edition of Italia there is limited space, so you have to keep it to fashion because it's a fashion magazine. But Italia is a brand, and so going online without having this issue of having limited space. It's like, what is Vogue Italia in the online? It could be anything, you know? So, Photo Vogue is open to, from still life to reportage, all kind of photography. And then the last one I mentioned is uh, Justine Jellings, obviously. Oh, well, I love her. She's my, my, my kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so th this gal uh, is a portrait photographer. From Amsterdam. Yeah, and she, she does a lot in terms of diversity and represented it in the way the old masters would do in painting and Dutch painting. And she transferred that to photography and it's uh, just incredible work. And what people are trying all around the world to achieve, she's been doing for years now and it's easy. Just let everybody if you're good, you're good. It doesn't. Yeah, you know. because what I feel that was missing in uh, on the web, you know, you have Flickr, you have other things, but I think that the what makes Photovolt so good is that it's curated. So, you know, Fred Ritchin, which is a friend and is also a great intellectual, and it's uh, he used to be the dean at ICP. Yeah. He once said, and I totally agree with him that. What we need today more and more is uh, curators, and uh, everything is shifting towards giving money. If a brand has to decide how to put their budget, today they give it to the influencers, most of them. Of course. I'm still feeling not well. <laughs> I know. Okay. 
Imagine me. No, I, I can't actually. I, I drink your water and relax, you'll be okay. No, it's okay, but you know, it yeah. really, really makes me mad this thing about quality and about uh, um, the importance of studying things, the importance of culture. Uh, I feel that too much we're living in a world, and this goes in Italy, in the States, everywhere, where uh, the idea of being a professional, of uh, being someone who studied a lot something, it's becoming almost uh, a no, right? It's becoming almost like um, if you study something, you're a loser. You should just you know, go ahead and do it and uh, the more ignorant you are the better it is you know i don't know i mean i don't know i mean i'm, I'm gonna fight this all my life i mean i'm not gonna good for you yeah it needs to be and that's what bogotalia has always stood for and in controversy and making stories that yes. were controversial you know, and not this, just fashion i feel that uh, somehow we could get away with it because we were a small country that's why I think Anna wasn't able to do it, even if she wanted to, because mm -hmm. the States is a huge market. The idea that we were small, you know, somehow we could be more artsy and we could be... But this is something we always believed in. I worked with Franca for 20 years, so I mean, when she passed away, it was really a tragic thing for all of us. And she was a genius, but what we wanted to do is to use images to tell stories. And, you know, fashion has always been, now today, it's even more uh, evident because of social media, that fashion can really bring change in the way that it can change people's gaze, because a fashion image uh, gets to so many more people than if you go into a museum or what. So, you know, I feel that in the past years, they, uh, the, the discourse over fashion has been a bit trivialized and fashion is not a stupid thing. Fashion is a language. The way we dress, it actually affects our mood. The way we dress uh, is the first thing that speaks about us, mm -hmm. with someone we meet, right? Mm -hmm. So fashion is very important from a sociological, anthropological point of view. And so using fashion images to tell stories, to speak about what's happening in our society, and this is actually, if you think about it, what all the uh, biggest master of fashion photography have done. Because like Avedon or Penn now are in the museums. Those images were in fashion magazines when they were done. So even this idea, this other stupid, I think, uh, prejudice that uh, if you're working on commission for a magazine, that is not art. It's, it's bullshit because it depends, you know, even the Sistina, the Capella Sistina was uh, painted because the church paid for it. So, um, you know, I think you, you should stay away from labeling things and try to understand every time what you're dealing with and what you're looking at, you know. And I feel that fashion photography, it's a great tool to speak about different issues that are not even related to fashion. What he was saying, for instance, the Meisel, which together with uh, Abedon are for me the two best fashion photographers that ever existed. Um, you know, Steven Meisel did the cover stories for Italia for 25 years. And, uh, and you know, he did some, some stories that were really incredible, like in Makeover Madness or Rehab. I mean, it, it, he was able to uh, speak about so many different social issues. And that's what I'm trying to do also with my festival, which is going to be the next edition now in November, 2015. And every year I focus on a certain uh, social issue. So the first year it was about female gays, and I'm quite proud that I was the first one to speak about it. And then everyone else came and uh, and then the second year I did fashion and politics to show how fashion can be talking about and this year is all about diversity because mm -hmm. I feel that it's 
very relevant and important today more than ever because if you see what's going on it's like on one side thanks to social media we are more open to diversity to on the other side from a political point of view all the governments in the states are becoming closer and there's this fear of otherness fear of someone different from you so it's weird no it's like uh, so where are we going? It's like, is it like just because it's politically correct, so then we can talk about diversity, but then on the streets, it's like here they keep uh, doing horrible racist things. So I feel it's important, and I feel, as I was saying before, that what fashion photography can achieve, it's uh, stronger than what politics can achieve somehow in terms of really of changing people's gaze. For instance, one thing that I really care about and I am, uh, I took a commitment with my readers and I've been doing this for a, a few years now, is to talk about people with disabilities in a different way because they're either, you know, either pitiable or heroes while they're just, you know, they want the same things we all want. And so, for instance, Justine's work or other works that I'm featuring on Bogdo Taiti are in this direction of showing a more broader um, representation, no? Yeah. Because there are a lot of issues of representation. I mean, I feel we all have prejudice and we all have to try to understand our prejudice and get over it. If you think about Africa, for instance, and how it's been you know, represented and featured for so many years and finally Africa is getting back yeah. and, and, and talking about, you know, what is, what their, their vision is and it's not someone else is going there and just telling. So, I mean, it's a very interesting time, I feel, for photography more than ever. Um, you know, there's always this thing, people saying photography is dead and I never gonna die and I think it's uh, more alive than ever uh, I have a question yes do you do you feel or are you worried ever that in making your story that on some level there could be some exploitation of what you're representing that in your mind, it could be pure, and it could. There are, I mean, of course, you should always have that in mind. Right, but uh, because it's hard. It's I mean, hard. it's hard. At because the same you want time, some, if you don't yeah. do it, nothing's gonna change. That's right. So the idea is to get the people in the pictures involved in the process. Right. Okay. So I make sure that that is always the case. Right. The people is aware, and they want that. Right. Then. I know. You know, what we feel, right. it's already a prejudice. I remember many years ago, I saw a, ca a calendar that was done with people with disabilities. It was a very cheesy calendar. And at the same time, I felt like uh, hurt and like I didn't like to look at it. But this idea that I didn't like to stay with it meant something to me. It meant that there was something wrong with it. So I am actually putting my prejudice to, towards this. Because who said that someone with disabilities doesn't want to look hot or doesn't want to wear fashion or doesn't want... It's us. Right. Yeah. They want that. So, I mean, I think we should be very careful and at the same time we shouldn't project on them what we think about them. Right. No? Yeah, I, I think that's the sort of the, the, the rub. But what yeah. happens if you put the person with a disability in fashion and your readership goes down? Because and you're in the, the, your readership goes down because a lot of the people who look at it don't want to look at it. How do you, how do you deal with that? Uh, this happens all the time. We did uh, an issue all with um, women over seventy years old. Okay. And it was uh, it was it didn't sell well. Right. That's it. But we made a statement. 
Right, but so it's, it's course, kind of a fine you know, line, isn't a, it? It's a balance. Yeah. I cannot, and it wouldn't even be appropriate to just go in one direction, even because then the important thing is like what I do with my Instagram is that I give you all kinds of photography, good photography. Mm -hmm. I can give you a super glamorous fashion picture and I can give you an email portrait of a people, a person with disabilities. Right. Like this, I can get more people to see that because I have all the people who just follow me for the fashion who are eventually going to see that and maybe I'm going to change something for them. So it's about, you find a compromise. It's very difficult, yes. Yeah. It's like putting the medicine in the bread. Yeah, you eat yeah. It, but you also get the medicine. Because human beings tend to exactly. run away from certain things. Exactly. Beat them. But that's how you can change things. Because if you become too extremist on one thing, then you're then just going to get that kind of uh, followers that are following that, and you're not going to change anyone's gaze, you know? So right. you have to keep it. I think also that the, the, the really important thing is having leadership, and you've already touched on this a few times, that there, it can't be influenced by. It, you still, with all this diversity, still need the leadership of someone you know, driving the boat. You have to have yeah. a, a captain. And, and that's where it's really important because there's so many boats going all into these different directions with no captains and everybody believes in it. Like, oh, get on that boat. It's like, you're not going anywhere necessarily. So this is also important to have a leader that gives you what's correct. Like, you see, I think the, the picture she, she posts and she is, has access to, amazing. All genre. Yeah. Now, no, I think it's good that way, you know, because in... My friends have friends that do reportage or fashion. They really, they, every time they encourage me even more to do that because they said it's so interesting because I didn't know. You know, it's like for someone doing war photography, they don't know about fashion photography necessarily right. and they, they might learn something and, and it's the other way around. So I feel that uh, if you make a strong uh, fashion photography, that is going to last forever, okay? And it's either going to talk more about the photographer or maybe more about the photographer and the society, you know? Mm -hmm. So the timeless quality of the good fashion image is there, always. But it's not that, I mean, I think the idea is when you're very good, you're very good. You know? And it's like, it's that that creates the the idea of being timeless, more than the style of the picture. I don't think that you can label something, uh, when we're talking about high photography, high fashion yeah. photography, you cannot label it and say this is fashion and this is uh, art. Why? I mean, where do you draw the line? Even some commercial, maybe after 20 years, they can become an artist. Is, is there any way, and I know it's an impossible question, but is there any way that when you're looking at, how do you call from all the things that you see and say, this is this will work in the magazine? It, I know there's not a formula to it, but no, there has I to think be something to it. First of all, I'm very talented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, you know, I mean, I feel sometimes I really feel that it's also something, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it could be just one image, and I understand. Right. Like, for the world, we get more than 3,000 per day, right? And it's open just three days per week. I have to say 90% of the time, 90, when I notice someone from the world, then it's going to be good. Okay. So there are a mixture of things that have to do with the vision. Okay, so it's not the technique, it's not uh, what you really see, but it's more the vision, and you you see that you you just uh, you feel it. You feel it. One, one of the people I, I have to say I'd love to meet uh, Chiara. 
Yeah. Because I think she's crazy. She's and crazy. I think she's, she's so, so amazing, crazy. And I think, where does she get this stuff? She's I love her so, so much. She's so really one. Yeah, she's so irreverent. She, she likes to do it, but like for real stuff. And while you're looking, do you, do you pick to a specific topic at a certain time or a specific subject because you want to have that, it's in your mind for that to come up in the magazine, or is it just a function of the, seeing something that impacts you enough that it's going to go in? Well, it's uh, both things. Oh, okay. You know, maybe sometimes you feel that there is something important to talk about. You know, it's like, it's never just one thing. Like this image, right? Right. Yeah. That I chose for photo Vogue as one of the photographers. When I was looking at this with my team, they didn't want to include that. And I said, for me, that is the image. It's the strongest one, and it's the one who got more likes on Instagram of everything that we published about photo Vogue. Why didn't they like that? They felt it was too much. Too much. And it was a bit offensive, maybe. And I just felt that it was an incredible image. So you see, it's like uh, you see and you go. I think if I could just ask you, um, there, there might be a big difference between an image free of any judgment and instinct and expertise over the years. When you go to the magazine, the editors need to know what you're going to do. They're going to say, here's the assignment, what do you, you want to do? So it's not at that point one image, because now you need to make a it's number of images. So while you can't have one picture in your portfolio, go, hi, this is my picture. Right. No. no, that's beautiful, but I can't hire you because what am I going to do? What do you want to do? Because the rest of the time, it's you know the kids' toys in the backyard, or whatever, which may be great. But that's the big transition that you know, as a professional photographer or a director, every day you must make superlative images. And all day, every day, not one and two or three. Have to be consistent. Not uh, yeah. It's about you know being able to do eight, ten images. But does that make it harder for you to pick somebody you've never heard of? Well, of course. Okay. I have to trust someone. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sometimes I take risk, but you know it depends where. But if if you're hiring photographer for fashion, mm. aren't you as a photographer standing there with your photo editors as you're creating the image that's going into the magazine and the photographer will have their opinion but at the end of the day it's really your photo editors who are going to somehow control no, the shot. No, it depends on who's the photographer, who's the stylist, you know, fashion photography is very complicated. It's not just about the fashion photography. Listen carefully. So, <laughs> fashion photography is about the team. Mm -hmm. So if you are a good photographer, but you don't understand fashion, you're never going to be a good fashion photographer. If you're a good photographer and you don't work with good styles, good hair and makeup, your pictures are going to be horrible. Right? No matter what, you can be a genius. So the idea is that you have to be able first to work with good people, but most important to understand if what people are doing is good for the picture. Mm -hmm. So it's a teamwork. Yeah. You see, I, 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 I love fashion. I love looking at fashion magazines. But I have this thing when I'm looking at certain images in fashion where I can't really see the clothing. I can't see it because of the way the image was taken. I can't see if there's a fold, I can't see if there's a pleat because the colors but are too dark. But you don't need to see that. Well, I, I... It's not a catalog. Mm -hmm. It depends. Okay. If you're not shooting a catalog, okay. you're, you know, Yevim Penn said this thing. He said, you know, fashion photography is not about selling clothes, it's about okay. selling dreams. Okay. You know, what are you talking about is catalogs, then you right. need to see... You see the item in a catalog. But otherwise, the... The, the, the clothes are just one of the things, the props that, you know, can help tell a story, but they're not the main thing. Right. They're just different. I think we'll let uh, Alessia get back to work so we, then we can continue admiring the hard work that she's doing. And um, what well, a pleasure to have you Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.